Hello, my dear gardening friends. You know, very often when we buy beautiful plants for our garden and we want our spaces to look wonderful and well designed, there is something wrong. And no matter how many beautiful plants we buy and uh, how great of a location we have, still the balance is not there. So today in this video we are going to talk about well-balanced spaces and how we can achieve those spaces which are filled with plants and at the same time they are well put together. This is not tight. I don't know about you, but every year when the winter comes, I promise myself that next year I'm going to be so on time and I will do everything. And one day I will sit in the house and will say, okay, my garden is put to winter and now I can relax. What a satisfying job I did. And it never happens. You know, I always struggle. Look at this. This is the middle of November and I'm still trying to put all this stuff away into the garage. Yay, yay. All right, but let's talk about this elusive balance and you know what um, balance is very closely uh, connected to weight and what do we mean by that and uh, the notion uh, of balance is shared by a lot of different um, um, a lot of different fields for example when the painter paints a painting the painting has to be well balanced, the composition of the picture has to be well balanced. When the interior designer designs a house, the interior of the house, it also has to be well balanced. So the same with the garden. Basically, all different fields share the same um, composition rules. And uh, in the garden, particularly in the garden, the notion of weight is very important. So what do we mean by weight? By weight, I mean the, that every object in our garden, every tree, plant, um, hardscaping, structures, they do carry their weight. And the well, our eye, when our eye look at the space and space is well balanced, it usually means that the weight in the space is well proportioned. And uh, there are different uh, rules. Uh, why some objects are lighter in weight and some objects are uh, heavier in weight. For example, when we compare these two trees, so here we have very dense evergreen uh, uh, tree right here, and here we have very airy uh, tree. But when you look at the structure, one tree is definitely bigger than the other, but because it has a very airy see-through structure, by our, our eye perceives it as uh, less of a weight than this very dense, very um, packed with needles space of uh, the evergreen uh, tree right here. So if the plant is perceived by our eyes as heavier plant, chances are that that plant will have a stronger branching habit. Very often that plant will be evergreen, it will be well trimmed and wouldn't have this very airy loose habit. So we clear that out. Now, a well-balanced landscape would be a landscape where the weight of objects in the garden are, is well distributed. So if we have a house and near the house, we have one tree growing on one side and there is emptiness on another side, our eyes perceive it as a not balanced design. And uh, there are different ways with which we can achieve a well-balanced design. And the easiest one would be to mirror the objects on both sides. For example, if we have a very uh, proportional house and we have the entrance in the front, in the middle of the house, the easiest way to achieve well-proportioned design would be to plant the same plants on one side and on another side. There are, pro uh, there are minuses and pluses to this approach uh, to achieve balance in garden design. The first one, this approach is not as interesting. It tends to be more formal. And for those people who love to have the exuberance of a uh, cottage garden, this probably wouldn't be the best approach. And um, the well-balanced design um, right away puts the house um, into this very kind of strict mode. 
Uh, and to me, it's not really interesting. But for some people, some people enjoy it, and it depends also on the architecture of the house. But what happens if you want to achieve a balance in design and you have different plans around? Uh, the rule is that the heavier object, if you have the heavier plant, let's say, for example, I have in front of my house, I have this big U growing on one side of the door. Then you would want to balance that weight with uh, uh, several plants of a smaller weight. And the combined weight of those smaller plants will kind of match the big, um, let's say, U in the, uh, the front of my house. And sometimes it can be tricky to achieve it, but when we walk around and we look at um, uh, human dwellings, we can train our eye to see what, um, what's wrong with certain uh, designs. And uh, for example, look at this picture. We were traveling in Cape May and I just uh, took a picture of uh, the house, which is a big house. It has a very big, long, tall space of its wall on one side. And look at this, when we look at this picture, right away our eyes, I think that there is something wrong with it. And uh, very often people wouldn't feel that something can be changed and uh, there is something wrong to it. But uh, I definitely see that plants here are too small for that space. That space demands to have bigger plants, bigger shrubs, to match the vast space of the wall. So let's see, let me color something in and let's compare two uh, spaces. So let's make some uh, bigger evergreens, let's say, and match them near the wall. Right away, this space looks much, interest much more interesting. Uh, so um, for those of you who really don't see what's wrong with the design, but you feel it and you try hard to fix it, but you don't know how, uh, one of the interesting suggestions would be when you walk around the neighborhood and you see that there is something wrong with uh, uh, designs of other folks, try to analyze it, why there is something wrong with that. And it can be a training and knowledge, you know, knowledge doesn't come to us right away, no matter how quickly uh, we read 100 books. Knowledge is acquired slowly through process. And uh, one of the ways to train your eye would be to look at the space which is not well designed and try to realize why. Another thing would be to go into space which is very pleasing and our eye automatically sees, wow, this is beautiful. Again, try to analyze it and see why it is beautiful. Why do you like this shade? Why do you like this, this uh, shrub right there? For example, I was walking uh, in my neighborhood and there were several bushes planted in front of the entrance. And the feeling, my feeling was, oh, this is exciting. I want to see what's behind those shrubs. The entrance must be very interesting. And I caught myself on that feeling and I realized, yes, we like this, this um, unseen mystery just behind the corner, uh, halfway hidden. And uh, if you have those feelings suddenly coming, oh, the response from a great design, um, analyze it and go deeper into your feelings and see why. So these are suggestions how to train your eye into seeing what is beautiful and what is not. Okay, so several practical suggestions. How to make your uh, um, landscape more balanced. First, you can always go for symmetry. If you don't like symmetry in your garden, uh, you can remember the rules that heavier uh, shrubs and trees can be balanced by several smaller ones and in uh, together they will add to the same weight. And please don't be afraid to plant in groups. Very often the tendency about, among gardeners is, oh, I want this plant and that and this and this. And garden looks like a collection of plants. Don't be afraid to buy several of abovaitis, several of boxwoods, and plant them in groups. Be free to let plants grow the way they usually grow in nature. Usually when we go into natural landscapes, we see plants grow in drifts and our eye is designed to perceive uh, uh, planting of drifts as good one. So we can do the same in our gardens and match the bigger uh, weight plants 
with the smaller ones in another location. Another suggestion would be always know that the darker colors are perceived as the heavier ones and lighter colors are perceived as lighter ones. For example, here we have this massive yew uh, tree growing. It was not really trimmed, so it stretched its beautiful limbs and it's of a very dark color. And when you look at it, it has a massive weight here in this corner. It pulls a lot of heaviness there, which is fine there. Uh, that um, mass kind of recedes into the background uh, and I like it because in front of it we have our pergola which is of lighter color and the dark color recedes back and kind of disappears masking the boundaries of our garden. But look at this uh, nice beautiful kind of disheveled looking. Uh, please don't worry about the disheveled look. This is how evergreens usually tend to look in the fall. They lose their foliage a little bit, their needles. But when you look at this guy, he is very light, and that's what I like about uh, Abovites. They stay very light in winter, and as a result, our eye perceives his mass as slightly lighter. Another suggestion I would want to uh, give you, let me just roll this. Another suggestion, which uh, also is, I think, important, uh, think not only one season or three seasons with your well-balanced landscape. A truly beautiful landscape stays well-balanced in winter too. And how do we achieve that? Well, definitely not with deciduous uh, shrubs and trees, which are losing their leaves for winter. And then we have this skeleton of the garden. The best advice would be if we want a balanced landscape through the year, we do the major planting, the skeleton planting with evergreens because evergreens keep their shape, their color, well, very often not the color, but at least the, um, the structure of the leaves. They don't drop their leaves. They keep it through the winter. And when everything goes down, all the leaves fall, we do have the structure of these beautiful plants to rely. So a good suggestion when you want a bell, especially well-balanced um, front door, Design, the first design step should be with evergreen plants. Make sure that both sides of the door is uh, well proportioned in planting. And then go away and plant gorgeous roses or perennials and annuals. Ooh, the strawberry got tangled up here. I don't really need it. All right. All right, my wonderful people, one more job is done. So this netting will go into the garage together with sticks and will wait till next spring when I'm ready to plant my raised beds, beds again. I hope this video was helpful. Please do subscribe if you like what I'm creating for you. Happy gardening, and I will see you next time.